Hello, welcome to the Northgate message for this week. Dan's still away, so I'm filling in for him. We've been going through a, a reading plan, reading through the New Testament at Northgate, and uh, each week talking about a uh, verse that we read. I'm going to deviate a little bit from, from that this week. I'm sure I could tie uh, what I'm about to speak about uh, to, to a verse, as it's a, a fairly broad topic, but uh, I'm a slow learner. God uh, seems to work in me over a long period of time, and uh, I generally don't learn from, from what I, in a week, I admire Dan and Doug for their ability to, uh, to put a message together based on uh, something they've learned this week. But I'm glad God's patient. He lets me uh, learn over a long period of time and uses uh, re my reading and, and verses coming together to, uh, to teach me something, and that's what I want to share today. Assuming you're a Christian, if I was to ask you about, uh, you know, what your faith was based on um, or why you believe, I think we'd eventually come to the word faith or the concept of faith. Faith is, seems to be very important to God. Um, throughout the Bible, it's, it's a big topic. And I don't know if you've ever stopped to think about it, but the way God came to earth um, is sort of interesting. He could have come to different cultures. He could have come to some of the big cultures of his time, the Romans, uh, Chinese, um, the Egyptians, where there's, we have a fair amount of written documentation. And uh, in all likelihood, there would have been documents written about Jesus' life, um, or more documentation written about his life. Um, but he didn't. He chose to come to, to Israel, a uh, relatively small backwater country compared to many of the, the large metropolises and, and big cultures uh, of that day. He also could have come in 2020, where uh, everything he did would have been recorded uh, on people's cell phones uh, and uh, put immediately put up on YouTube and, and TikTok. But uh, he didn't choose to do that either. So faith, perhaps, the, the is, is important. And he seems to have come to us and, and operated in a way with, with people where faith um, is a critical part of that relationship. But what is faith? I don't know if you've ever tried to, to put that into words, but even as a Christian, someone who's grown up in the church for uh, really for my entire life, it's a, it was a difficult thing to, to define. Uh, it's sort of interesting. If you look at older definitions of faith, they run something along the lines of a firm belief in something for which there is no proof. Um, another definition would be strong belief in God and the doctrines of, the, of a religion based on um, apprehension rather than spiritual apprehension rather than proof so it was the older definitions t tend to speak to a belief uh, that's based not on solid proof if you get into newer definitions and I just pulled one from Wikipedia they talk about belief without evidence so it's moved in our culture from not only belief without proof but belief without evidence I think as Christians, we do understand that it's more than that, but I think we also often have absorbed that definition and, and tend to think really of faith in the same way. If you push people in the church, generally the definition they'll, they'll give you is Hebrews 11.1. 1, and that says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. I must admit, maybe I'm a slow learner, but I've heard that many times. And despite that, I've come away really with no better or clearer definition of what faith really is. And in, in studying faith and trying to understand it, I think I've come to the conclusion that that verse might be more of a definition of the result of having faith or a, a description of the result of having faith rather than an actual definition of what faith is. So I'm left with a lot of questions. Why do we use the word faith instead of just belief? Where does faith come from? Is it from God? Do I have a part in faith? Can I strengthen my own faith? How do I do that? Is it different from what we might call blind faith? Um, really just a hope that something will happen based on, on what we want. And then we get to Matthew 17, 20, that talks about being able to move mountains with the faith of a tiny mustard seed. And I look at myself and say, wow, I don't seem to be able to do that. Um, I'm not, certainly not, 
creating miracles or there's no miracles resulting from my faith that I can see. And when and more broadly, when I look around at the uh, the community of Christians, the church, um, you know, the Bible seems to suggest that faith results in this victorious life, victory over sin, big things happening. If you read through Hebrews 11, amazing things because of faith, um, incredibly changed lives. And yet, broadly, when I look at, you know, say the church, I'm not sure that's the impression I get. So, yeah, I'm left with a number of questions about faith, and that's what I want to tackle today, to try and understand a little bit more about what faith is um, and how we live a life of, of faith that God would call us to. So what is faith? First off, it's, it's more than just belief. We know this. Uh, in James uh, 2.19, he says that the demons believe in God, but obviously they're not saved. They, they don't have faith. So there's a difference. We can believe in something, even something about God, but not have faith. So it's got to be more than just belief. It's surprisingly hard to find a really good definition of faith. Um, as I looked and tried to study a number of different people who, who have tried to define this, uh, there's no sort of one single definition that comes out. Um, the Greek word that faith comes from is pistis. Um, I think I'm pronouncing that somewhat right. I am not a Greek scholar by any stretch. Um, but the, the comment is there's no real word that in, in English that we would, that has the same definition. The, it really has the connotation of, of belief as trust, of lo as loyalty, all combined into one. Um, and I think if faith as an English word did have that connotation, we've lost that in the, you know, over the centuries since the Bible was written. Um, we tend to associate faith with belief, maybe somewhat with trust. I'm not sure we really wrap loyalty into that. But faith really encompasses all of those at the same time. Uh, another commentator describes it this way, faith is active, not passive. It's an attitude or relationship. It's the result of a soul-shattering encounter with a resurrected Christ. In Paul's own case, this encounter so convinced him of the power of God in, in his son that Paul was able, through grace, to abandon his life completely to the direction and control of the Lord. This assured abandonment is faith. So let's pick that apart a little bit. I tried to come up with my own one-line definition and I would fall along the lines of faith is trust, loyalty in a person that leads to action. It's not about what I believe, but it's the reality of the person in whom I put my trust. That's the key part of, of faith. Another commentator says this, faith is trust confidence with a connotation of belief based on the reliability of the one who's trusted. It actually goes back to the concept of buying from a merchant and, you know, when you were getting your, you know, they were doling out whatever you were buying by weight that you trusted, you had faith that they were going to be honest. That trust was in the, the merchant and in, our trust is in the, the person of Christ. So it's not about knowledge. It's not about belief. It's really about who we believe we trust in. That is the key component of faith. It's not about my feelings. My feelings may change based on a whole bunch of things that are unrelated to the trustworthiness of the person I have faith in. So it's not based on my feelings. In we know God, Christ, remains the same, even though my feelings may come and go. So faith doesn't worry about feelings, doesn't worry about my belief or doubts. It's all about who I believe in. It's also about loyalty. Trust and loyalty are only visible in action. We can say we believe, um, but it's only in action that we really demonstrate trust and loyalty by taking act, some action that, that, is, that steps out 
based on the trust and loyalty we have for someone. In Hebrews 11, which is you know often known as the Hall of Fame of Faith in the Bible, where it goes through and lists all kinds of people and, and the great acts of faith they did. Um, in the NIV, the, the title it puts on that, which is not necessarily biblical, but the translators um, have added in, it says faith in action. I think it might actually be better named faith is action. If you read through Hebrews 11, it's not about what people knew or what they believed. In fact, in most cases, they were acting be outside of that. They may have been stepping outside of their doubts, beyond their doubts, but it's the actions they took that they are um, remembered for in, in Hebrews 11. It's about action based on an absolute trust and confidence and loyalty in the person we believe in, in God himself. If you step back to that first verse of, of Hebrews 11, the uh, New Living Translation actually translates a little bit differently. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It's the evidence of things we cannot see. The words that translated reality there or confidence in the NIV actually has a meaning of coming underneath and supporting. It's kind of the concept of the table that supports or support underneath uh, something. So I think, you know, if I was to provide my own translation of that verse based on uh, some of the reading I've done that kind of pulls together maybe a few of the translations is, you know, faith provides support for our confidence in the hope, in the hope that we have, the evidence for the assurance of the things we do not see. It's really that our faith, the confidence, the assurance we have comes from the person that that's in, that it's in Jesus Christ himself and that we can have complete confidence in that. But one last comment before we sort of go on from here. It's not that that hope or that confidence or that loyalty is based, is completely evidence free. Paul himself in 1 Corinthians 15 talks about that if Christ wasn't raised, your faith is useless. Our hope, our trust, our faith is based on the reality that Jesus was real. He came to earth, he died for us, he was resurrected and now lives in heaven. We have that, the documentation of that in, in the Bible. Um, we have the reality of that in the Holy Spirit that lives in us, the, the evidence of that. So it's not that it's evidence-free, but it's not something we can prove. Um, Jesus didn't come in 2020 with, with YouTube um, that we can look at. So there is a, faith is required, but it's based on the reality of, what, of who Jesus is and what he's done. Um, and we can have complete confidence in that because he's, he's not changing. So given that, given that definition, what does that mean for us? How do we live based on that? I think it should completely change the way we live. Most of us aren't going to be asked, at least in our audience here in, in Canada in 2020, to, to give up our lives, to sacrifice our son like Isaac was, uh, to face the lions that the early church was, um, you know, or... or uh, Daniel, um, that's not the life we're being asked to, to live. Um, and we pray that it, it stays that way. But that doesn't mean our lives shouldn't be dramatically changed the way Paul's was, um, by faith. I like how another author chose to, to put this. He says, as a name for this spiritual uh, life work, describing how faith should operate in our lives, I might suggest faithing um, if, it weren't, if the word weren't so clumsy. And I think that's an amazing description. Our lives should just be so full of faith that we could actually describe the way we live as a Christian, as faithing. Um, that might dis should describe the, the Christian life. Living it completely and totally dependent on our loyalty, our trust in, in Jesus. So what does that mean more specifically? I've pulled out a few things that uh, I think are, are important uh, to all of us and maybe particularly ones that I've found meaningful, but uh, for, for, it may be different for you. There may be other things that this brings to mind. First of all, 
we are justified, we're forgiven, we're declared righteous by Jesus' death. As far as we're God's concerned, our sin is covered over by Jesus' blood. By faith, we accept this is true. And we live that way. When we fail, and we're going to, when we sin, even if it's a repeated sin, we believe and understand and trust that God still sees us as completely righteous. We don't let Satan create a barrier of shame, of guilt between us and God because we've sinned. To God, we are still completely righteous and we accept this by faith. We are, we are fully justified. We're righteous in his eyes. We confess to restore the relationship and we move on. It's, our feelings may be shame, they may be guilt for what we've done, but we can't let that block the fact, and that's a fact, that we can have by faith, that we can understand by faith that Jesus sees us, that God sees us as fully and completely righteous. So there's no need for us to grovel, to, to worry about this. We can move forward immediately understanding that. That's really what I think the shield of faith is about that uh, Paul talks about in Ephesians 6. Our faith means that there's no accusation Satan can throw at us that gets by the shield of faith that, it, that says that we are justified. Satan can't shame us. He can't accuse us. God has taken our sin away. That's a huge one. Satan loves to, to bury us in, in shame and guilt. Um, and those feelings, I'm not sure we can ever get rid of them. But faith is saying, even though I have these feelings, my faith is based in God and what he did. And therefore, despite my own feelings, I can move on. We can have faith that will not be tempted beyond what we can bear. We don't have to give in to temptation. God has promised that he will come alongside us. He will not give us any temptation beyond what we can bear. We don't need to sin. We don't need to give in. That's a promise of God that we can accept by faith. We may feel it's impossible. And we all will fail. We're human. But we should recognize that. God has given us that promise. And we can live in it by faith. We can have faith that he will work, as he's promised, all things out for, for good for those who love him. We don't have to understand how that's going to happen. We may never be able to figure it out. We may have a lot of doubts that it's possible. Um, it may see beyond what can happen on earth. But he, we can accept by faith that it's going to. We don't necessarily have to believe it intellectually. But we can move forward in faith knowing. We can take the step forward believing that God will work all things out for good. Even if it's beyond our understanding of how that's going to be. I think that's really what faith is. It's moving when we still have the doubts, when we're still unclear, but that we trust so in God, in who he is, not in our understanding or our level of belief, um, which will change, uh, will be affected by everything going on around us. We can trust that he knows what's best for us. Um, that in following his commands, in obeying him, uh, that we will grow uh, spiritually, will be sanctified, will be changed to be more like him. Um, that the life that we're going to end up with by doing that is better than the one that we would choose for ourselves based on our own desires. Um, the obedience to him, no matter what the seeming cost, is worth it. Again, we, when we look at this from our own level of understanding, from what we can see based on our feelings, we're not going to get there. There's going to be a lot of barriers that we're not going to think are solvable. But we're going to think that our way often looks better. But again, this is a step of faith. It's saying we're not doing this because we understand. We're not even doing it because we necessarily um, are convinced Intellectually, we can see how this is going to work out. We're doing it because of God, his person, the fact that we trusted him for our salvation and eternal life, 
And now we're going to trust him that his other promises are true as well. Our loyalty in him, to him, our trust in him is what drives us to take these steps. Over the last number of years, I, I have you know, found this to be true in so many ways. But one example is, is in the area of prayer. I must admit, I've struggled with prayer my entire life. Uh, I think I told Dan several years ago, you know, I just don't get prayer as a Christian. Um, intellectually, it makes no sense to me uh, why praying helps. Um, I don't get any, I'm not an emotional person. I don't get any emotional experience. I don't get very specific answers when I pray. Um, you know, the, none of these things happen. And yet, you know, and I, I appreciate what Northgate and Dan have done in my life in this area. I've been encouraged to pray because God promise, has promises. He wants us to do it. And he makes promises of what will happen to us in prayer. And, and so I made a commitment a little while ago to, to pray, to pray more often, to pray regularly. And none of that's changed. I still don't understand necessarily, you know, I can't intellectually figure out prayer. Um, I still get no feelings. Um, direct answers, I can't really think of, of many. But I can see the, how prayer has, has worked in my life and, and how it has drawn me closer to God, I think, and made me more aware of, of him, even though if I can't point to, to specifics and how he has, uh, I'd say, blessed me in that. So that's one example for me. It's, it's not standing up to, to persecution or, you know, whatever the big things may be. It's a small th area of saying, God, you've promised this. I don't understand it, but by faith, I'm going to step and do it. I'm going to take action. And I've seen the benefits. And so I would encourage you to do similarly. So that leads us to really, though, I'm here now, you know, in my here and now, I'm struggling with faith. I'm sure we all do uh, in one area or another, maybe in all areas. I certainly uh, wouldn't say, you know, I wouldn't stand up and put myself as any example of faith. Um, something I continue to, to struggle with, even though I think God has been working and helping me in this area in the, in the last years. So, so how do we go from where we are to, to where um, we want to be, to where the, the God would call us to be in, in terms of living a, a life of, of faith, to, to faithing as our uh, life, uh, as our Christian life? I think, first of all, we have to remember it's not about us. It's not about the amount of faith we have. It's who our faith is in. You know, I, I keep, as I was putting this together, I kept coming back to the thought of, we trusted God. I trusted God with my salvation, with my eternal future, that he would take my sins away. That's a, that's a lot of, that's a big thing. So why can't I trust him with the, the, all the smaller, perhaps, or seemingly other things, maybe not smaller, that uh, he calls me to trust him? in to have it's the same he's the same person so if i can trust him in that why can't i trust him in everything um and i should so it's not about me it's not about my feelings i come back to that it's not about my uh intellectual belief it's not what about what i can figure out it's about who he is and that doesn't change so it's not about how much faith i have it's about realizing who my faith is in i think it's also very circular Faith leads us to action. I, I, I think it must. If, if we have faith, it will lead to action. Action in the sense of taking steps forward. Maybe it's big actions to make change, but often it's just doing what God asks us to do um, and believing that, that that will work for, for his glory and, and our, he will work it for our good. Um, but as we do that, God uses those steps to build um, our faith. We discover that he will never let us down. And that in turn helps us take the next step, maybe a bigger step the next time. So where we are is we don't have to take that leap. It's just take the next step, as small as it, it seemingly may be. Uh, and that's in turn what, what, what will build our, our faith for the next one, uh, the next step. It builds our understanding of who God is, his faithfulness. Um, yeah, so it, it, again, it comes down to he's there, he never changes. It's really about us learning and, and understanding that um, at the core of our, our being so that our life reflects that 
in, in every way. I think there's other practical things we can do. Um, the disciples in Luke 15 asked Jesus to increase their faith. So I don't think there's any reason we can't do that. Um, we should do that. In fact, we should pray and ask God to increase our faith or, you know, give us, maybe even give us um, things we can do where we can take steps of faith that will increase our faith. Now, that's always scary. That means stepping out. Sometimes God, you know, may test us in that way. But if we ask for it and are willing to take that step, I think we can guarantee that he will be faithful, he will be there, and our, he will use that to to increase at least our understanding of faith. I think increasing our faith is in some ways a, a misnomer, but it's really our increasing our understanding or, or the depth of faith we have. Reading the Bible, um, you know, the Holy Spirit uses that to work in us. We know that, that's described in the Bible. It's one of the roles of the Holy Spirit. It's one of the purpose we have, God's words. So doing that, and there's so many examples in the Bible of people acting in faith. Uh, and I think that's, you know, helpful to see and understand uh, and encourage us. And likewise, fellowshipping with other Christians, the example of other people stepping out, um, seeing the results in their lives, understanding their struggles, encouraging them, but having them encourage us at the same time, interacting with them, um, obeying God to, to love them. Um, and, and in doing that and love people perhaps who are unlovable both inside the church and out again that's action that God asks us to take and but just the fellowship of other believers um, I believe is is very helpful in in seeing um, being inspired by them and how God works and is faithful to them and serving uh, again is really another action but just taking that step where God you see an opportunity to serve not that it's mandated we're not call to serve works doesn't make us any better, but often it's a leap of faith to step out and say, God, I'm not sure I can do this, but uh, I see an opportunity where, where you could, you know, where I could serve you. I'm going to step out and, and trust that uh, you'll, you, you'll work this out for, for my good and for the good of people I'm seeking to serve and take that step of faith. Uh, certainly that's an area where I, in my own life, have seen God work and prove his faithfulness uh, very frequently. And then there's two stories, really, that in the Bible that stand out to me that have, in some ways, been um, the biggest encouraged to me, encouragement to me when it comes to faith. In in Mark nine, um, there's a man brings his son to Jesus after he brought his son to the disciples, and they they couldn't uh, uh, get rid of the evil spirit in his son. And so, kind of picking up the story, Jesus asked the boy's father, "How long has he been like this? From childhood?" He answered, "He has often been th he has often thrown him into the fire." Or water to kill him but if you can do anything take pity on us and help us if you can said Jesus everything is possible for one who believes immediately the boy's father exclaimed I do believe help me overcome my unbelief and then again in Matthew 15 uh, Jesus says leaving that place Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon a Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out Lord Son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word, so his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out to us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted, and her daughter was healed at that moment. First man came questioning his level of belief, his level of faith. Um, second woman came questioning her worthiness uh, for God to act. But they both acted. They both came and stepped out and made the request in faith, and God answered that. And I think that's really similar for us. Um, the really is the step is just taking that action, taking that perhaps leap of faith, um, but knowing that God is there and, and w our belief is in that person. That leap is not a blind leap. It's based on who God is. And I believe that's really what faith is all about, acting despite um, the questions we may have um, and understanding still that God is there for us. 
So let me ask, just end, sorry, in, in a word of encouragement. We're all in different places in regards to faith. Um, but we all have faith in that same person, the God who created us, who saved us, who, who came here on earth, who lived, who died, who was resurrected and is alive. And now he asks us to, to live that life of faith, to be faithing um, all the time. So look for those opportunities to step out, uh, to believe in faith, um, not because we don't have doubts, not because we don't have worries that that may not work out, but because of who he is. And remember that if we trusted God to forgive our sins with our eternal future, we can trust him in these decisions or day-to-day -day, um, actions we need to take. So let me encourage you today, look for somewhere where you can, uh, in faith, step out and trust God and see what happens. Thanks, and just uh, let me pray for us all in that. And Lord, we uh, we come to you. We're, uh, we're all short of faith. We all have uh, human doubts and unbelief and worries, but uh, we know that really you are faithful. And I just ask for all of us that we'll be willing to, to step out and, and trust you, um, to trust who you are, and take those, those steps to understand Stand that in a deeper way and let you um, meet our needs uh, to, to be the, the one who is the object of our faith to prove your trustworthiness, your loyalty, that you'll never let us down. Just ask this in your name. Amen.